At the heart of the Taipei 101, they put 36 rigid steel tubes filled with concrete that gave the building strength. While the columns stand firm during a quake, the rest of the structure is elastic. It can flex and roll with the punches. Halfway during the construction, Mother Nature tested this design to the limit. On the 31st of March 2002, an earthquake hit the Taipei 101. The quake shattered smaller buildings, but the Taipei 101 was still standing. The engineers of the Taipei 101 claim that during a quake, their building is the safest place in town. The Burj Dubai can withstand earthquakes of up to six on the Richter scale because it has a massive reinforced concrete skeleton. But here the engineers face a different problem. Making a super tall building stand up in the desert sand requires special measures. At the Burj Dubai, they have rock relatively shallow, but it's very, very poor rock. It's very weak, it's very fractured, and it, on its own, it can't carry a lot of weight. So they went 50 meters down deep into the rock in order to get enough of a rock to support that structure. The rock under the Burj Dubai is fragile and saturated with groundwater. Any big hole will cave in immediately. To stop this from happening, the engineers fill the boreholes with a viscous polymer slurry, which pushes the groundwater and rock fragments to the edge of the borehole and keeps it open. The polymer is a, kind of a space-age material, and what it does is it makes very long molecules or chains, so that kind of makes very long tendrils that come out. That viscosity helps to keep the excavation from caving in. The secret name for the contractors on site is basically to call it snot. The syrupy polymer is denser than water, but lighter than concrete. The concrete displaces the slurry and eventually hardens to form a foundation pile. 200 of these piles work together to stop half a million tons of real estate from sinking into the ground. The building so far has gone down around 30 millimeters, which is slightly more than an inch. It's about the thickness of my thumb, which is, which is a very small number for a building of this size. In just over 130 years, the skyscraper conquered all the forces of nature using the power of human ingenuity. But as buildings soared higher and higher into the sky, they became more vulnerable. Now the fear of terrorism threatened their existence. Today, a final technological leap forward keeps the occupants of the world's biggest skyscraper safe. A chilling day in September 2001 seemed to spell the end of the skyscraper. After the attacks of 9-11, many believed that no super tall building would ever be built again. Mike Hurley was the fire director of the World Trade Center on 9-11. I don't think anyone can say that they could foresee those events of September 11th where planes would be used basically as missiles to fly into the building. Um, but once that occurred, the, the, it became a fire safety issue, and then we began our typical plan to, uh, to evacuate the occupants. Evacuating a skyscraper is a phenomenal challenge. 
The taller you build, the more people have to walk ever further to get to safety. On 9-11, the difficulties became tangible. You would think that walking downstairs would be um, a lot easier than walking up the stairs, but it, it's not. It's almost as difficult as walking up. Not everyone walks at the same speed, and you may have some people who walk very quickly, people who are more physically fit. Some people were injured, maybe didn't have their shoes. They lost, you know, um, things along the way, and, and um, it, it sure didn't make it easy for anybody. The Burj Dubai has built-in fire protection, as its concrete backbone is naturally fire resistant. But it's expected to be nearly twice as tall as the Twin Towers. So how do people get out in an emergency? The answer is, they don't. The Burj Dubai contains nine very special rooms. Refuge rooms. Built from layers of reinforced concrete and fireproof sheeting, the walls of these rooms withstand the heat of a fire for two hours. Each room has a special supply of air pumped through fire-resistant pipes. Sealed fireproof doors stop smoke from leaking in. In the refuge room, residents can seek shelter from a fire until emergency services bring it under control. There is one of these rooms about every 30 floors, which should allow residents to reach them without too much effort. Refuge rooms are a radical idea. But even the safest place in the world is no good if the access route is blocked by smoke. At this fire college, firefighters learn how to rescue people from burning buildings. In a fire, it's not normally the fire that kills you, but the smoke inhalation. 98% of people die in a fire because of smoke. If I wasn't wearing this breathing apparatus, I'd soon become overcome with smoke. The stairways could become blocked with people trying to escape. And if this happened, I'd be a dead man. But there is technology that takes smoke out of the equation. The Burj Dubai has an early warning system that guards it round the clock. If fire activates a smoke detector, a heat sensor or a water sprinkler, a network of high-powered fans kick in. The fans force clean, cool air through fire-resistant ducts into the building. The fresh air pushes the smoke out of the stairwell and keeps the evacuation routes clear. It's fire safety fit for a 21st century skyscraper. When the Burj Dubai is complete, it will be the tallest structure that mankind has ever built on the face of the planet. Standing on the shoulders of historic engineering marvels, the Burj Dubai really is the ultimate skyscraper. Until someone builds an even bigger one.